So I don't understand where like kind of this arrogance comes from for Pat Narduzzi. Like you're fine if you think Kenny Pickett would have made a difference in the football game. He would have made some type of a difference. Good, bad, and different. Who knows? Right. But like that's all you have to say. <laughs> you don't have to add in all all of this extra stuff to I don't know, throw salt on the wound of Michigan State, I guess, even though there would be the ones that that would be salty. Uh I just honest to God, I don't get it. Because then what like, what does it say, uh, you know, about you? Like, if everyone's going to point the finger right back at you, you're the guy who could convince Kenny Pickett to play in the game. It's not like he was hurt. He chose to set out because, you know, you guys weren't in the college football playoff. If it was a college football playoff game, I bet Kenny Pickett would have would have played in the game, right? And Michigan State, they didn't have their best player either. So, like, I don't understand where where this is coming from like i know he was asked the question about it and he's gonna answer it one way or another he just didn't have to be a, a jackhole about it <laughs> well i was gonna go point by point with this so i was leaving certain things out so we can get to those afterwards but you know starting with just you know nardog and his comments on it look you know, we live in a different world now where he's on a local radio show and back in the day local radio shows didn't make national media they do now. Everything's on the internet. You can't hide from anything. And you're doing a podcast, which is going to go across the internet anyway. And we saw this through Twitter. So obviously it did that. Uh, and I understand his point about Kenny Pickett. I, I, you're talking about, you know, a Heisman candidate and a, you know, great college quarterback and a Michigan State secondary that couldn't stop a nosebleed more often than not. So I understand his points. I understand, you know, he wasn't ready for the question. And, came, you know, very honest with it and played up to the Pittsburgh, you know, fan base and crowd that are going to be checking out this podcast in the first place. But it does seem a little dishonest to me more so when he goes from talking about Kenny Pickett and being a 20 point difference, 21 point difference to his second string quarterback, Nick Patty, and how if Patty had stayed in the game, that it would have been a 10 point difference. Now, Nick Patty played the first quarter. He went two for five for 21 yards no touchdowns no picks he did rush three times for 27 yards and a touchdown on that touchdown play where he dove for the end zone landed on his collarbone broke his collarbone and that was it for nick patty now nick patty's third string quarterback pittsburgh's third string quarterback david bevel davis bevel came in and he actually had a pretty good game. 14 of 18, only missed on four passes had about a buck 50 one yard shy a touchdown and a pick Again, Michigan State secondary is god-awful. They were terrible last year. Far and away the worst part of the Michigan State team altogether. So I understand with Kenny Pickett that you feel that you would have more points. However, like you said, Michigan State did not have Kenneth Walker III to run the ball for them, who is a giant difference between him and every other running back on Michigan State's football team last year. And that shows when you look at the box score and you see that our lead back in the game, Jordan Simmons, rushed the ball for 16 times for 23 yards, an average of 1.4 yards per carry. Elijah Collins, six times for 15 yards, two and a half yards per carry. Everything else, that they don't really matter that much. They aren't really in the running game for you know per se. But so when our number two and number three running backs trying to pick up the slack for Kenneth Walker don't get anything done and yes Pittsburgh had a pretty good run defense but I don't know how many running backs they faced that were the caliber of Kenneth Walker in the first place last year and we saw more often than not how much of a difference Kenneth Walker made when he was on the field he had one hell of a year probably the best single year for a, a, an individual Spartan who was only there for one year will probably ever see although it's easy to say now but the transfer portal who knows what we end up with in the future but so for me I understand why Nardog responded the way he did until he got to the backup quarterback and thought that with him they would have had 10 more points easy when he didn't do anything in that first quarter besides rush for the touchdown at the end of the first quarter that got his collarbone broken and then came out of the game. So maybe I would be like really bad at that PR job because I didn't mean to say Davis Bevel and I said uh, Nick Patty in like the first sentence that I said. Well, so Nick Patty was in. Maybe he's there. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's like, I'm going to shout out to Davis Bevel who did a, a fine enough job. With, so like with Kenneth Walker's in, in not in, well, sort of injury, I guess, but he sat out too with his absence. There is a huge difference between Kenneth Walker and Jordan Simmons or Elijah Collins because 
Kenneth Walker did a lot of his work, like without the help of a great offensive line. So if Michigan State had a great offensive line, then maybe the second, like in third string running bags wouldn't matter so much. And it'd be something like you used to see with the Dallas Cowboys, where, you know, like Tony Pollard could still have a fine year mm-hmm. if Ezekiel Elliott's on, you know, um, d- uh, out for the game. But with Kenneth Walker, I don't know if he finished the season as like number one in this stat, but there's like yards after contact and like he made the most out of unexpected yards or something like that. And the blocker was first pretty much the entire year because he was running behind a mostly bad O-line. Okay. In some spots, but uh, a mostly bad online, and you know, he's he won the dope walker award, so that goes to show you that he was special because he was hip, he wasn't special because he had a great offensive line. And then again, if you're like Narduzzi, the fact that you would just say, Okay, like we didn't have Kenny Pickett, so okay, we can't win the game, you were up 21. 21- to 10 when the first quarter started or when the fourth quarter started and then you got blank 21-0 in the fourth quarter like some of that's got to be on you that's got to be on your team you guys obviously had chances to make winning plays and you didn't do it you'd spend the whole game before that being fine without Kenny Pickett you looked like you were going to win the game and you ended up losing and if you're a coach like you have to answer for that portion of it you know giving up 21 points in the fourth quarter and not scoring any points to yourself more so than you could just shift the blade and say, okay, well, like we didn't have Kenny Pickett. Like you knew you weren't going to have Kenny Pickett. It wasn't a game time decision that Kenny Pickett's like, oh, by the way, coach, I'm, I'm out of here. You had this whole time to game plan without Kenny Pickett. You started the game without Kenny Pickett. You were winning the game without Kenny Pickett. It's not like he went out after three quarters and then the fourth quarter came and you're like, oh my God, we got to, like, we don't know what we're doing. Like, these kids had played, and, you know, Bevel had played pretty well until he threw that pick six to Cal Holiday to essentially seal the game. But it's, I don't know, like, I don't understand where you'd honestly be coming from if you're if you're Narduzzi to dig this up and say, hey, we would have won if we had Kenny Pickett. When you know that there's 10 other factors where people can just point at you and say, well, this, 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 and this are all reasons why you lost, maybe even more so than Pickett not playing. Right. And let's also give a little credit to Michigan State in the way the game played out is the way a lot of Michigan State games played out last year. The front seven eventually wore the opponent down. It happened against Michigan. It happened in Miami. And it happened in the New Year's Six Bowl as well, where in the fourth quarter, look, I, I, I love, <laughs> I love the saying. I don't get behind it as much, but it's for lack of a better term, the Spartans kept chopping, and they kept chopping, and eventually wore down their opponent. And they had great play from the quarterback on their side of the ball. Uh, the wide receivers, Reed and Naylor, did their thing. And the Spartans kept going. They did it defensively, obviously, to ice the game. They did it offensively as well, 21 points, 14 of them offensively. And the Spartans did what they needed to do to win the game without their best player, beating a team who obviously didn't have their best player. Now, look, we're not going to weigh the difference of importance between a running back and a quarterback. We all know where that's going to sway, and it's going to head towards Pickett's side than it is KW3 side. But you still had to do it without your best player on both sides, and the Spartans got it done. Now, the thing that you brought up that we haven't talked about yet is Narduzzi talking about going into the Big Ten and winning the Big Ten because he's claiming Michigan State, one of the best teams in the Big Ten that year. Well, you know, we should have beat them, and, you know, so obviously that means that we could win the whole Big Ten. Michigan State had a hell of a year last year. Were they the best team in the Big Ten? No. They're near the top? Sure. Don't be fooling yourself thinking you're going to go in there and run through Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State and Wisconsin as well as Michigan State on your way to winning the Big Ten because it ain't that easy as we've seen teams try and fail year in and year out. So that part of it got to me as well. Hey, Ryan Griffin here. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Griffin and Bass. Be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to click the bell to receive the latest notifications from DSN and subscribe for breaking news, community blogs, polls, contests, and other content.